Last time, we began a scenario where Bulma started training to use Key, and she's now on the path of becoming a Z fighter, especially because she's had her first actual battle. Raditz arrived on Earth, causing havoc like usual. But the outcome of that battle was very different to say the least, so what's gonna happen from here on out? We'll see all that and more in this part 2 of What If Bulma Was a Z Fighter. No one really has any idea of what to do with Raditz, and Raditz honestly doesn't know what to do either. Obviously, the first thought that comes to Raditz's mind is to just kill them all, but that didn't work out the first time. And a couple of them want to kill Raditz too, mainly Ten, Piccolo, and surprisingly enough, Chi Chi's also fine with them doing whatever they want. He did kidnap Gohan after all. Bulma might actually side with Ten and Piccolo because logically this would be the best thing to do. He did threaten to destroy everyone here after all and almost killed them. Also, she nearly killed Goku over destroying her car when he was a kid. So Raditz, you probably would have no problem killing. Goku takes the opportunity to ask more about these Saiyans. So if there are others out there, are they at risk? Raditz tries to make it seem like the Saiyans are gonna come one day, but they won't. Goku thought they needed him to take over some planet or something, so now they're gonna do it without Raditz? It seems like they didn't really value him much in the first place. Honestly, Goku's not too concerned about it. It doesn't sound like they're gonna show up, and if Raditz does cause any more issues, they beat him once and they could beat him again. And Raditz never did try to trick Goku here. At least, not yet. Goku originally was gonna let him go and give him a second chance, so maybe he'd give him a second chance here too. They're not gonna help him get off the planet either. Goku calls Nimbus and gets ready to fly off with Chi-Chi and Gohan. He tells Raditz to come and find him when he's gained some sense back. It was pretty fun battling him, and Goku would like to fight him again. Obviously in better conditions, though. The others just look on confused as Goku leaves. Well, it is his call, after all. It's weird for Piccolo because he thinks they should kill Raditz, but it's the same thing that happened with him after the World Tournament, with Goku sparing him despite having every reason to kill him. So then Piccolo flies off, too, reminding Raditz that if he does cause any issues, Piccolo won't hesitate to kill him. After all, it is his world to take over. And just in case, Bulma snatches his scouter. They don't want him contacting anyone after all, and Bulma could try and study this, figuring out how it works and seeing if she could reverse engineer it somehow, mainly for the communication purposes. There has to be a ton of data on this thing. Eventually everyone leaves reluctantly. Right now Raditz is too beat up to fight anyways. He was defeated. Not only is his pride shattered, but pretty much everything in his body is shattered too. And he was abandoned by the other Saiyans. He can't leave either because his ship is broken, thanks to Yamcha. No one cares enough to kill him, no one cares enough to save him, and it seems like he's stuck here. Leaving a weird mix of emotions. Mostly anger though. Although, he might have one shot off this planet. That woman. The one who was piloting that ship. The one who took that scouter from him. Maybe she could fix his ship. Besides her taking the scouter and saying that she was going to reverse engineer it, her shirt had the same logo that the ship had. So, maybe she built that ship, too. She has to have some understanding of how to fix this. So, what does Raditz do now? He's too hurt to fight them right now. And maybe out of spite, he could go destroy a city or something. But that's just going to look pathetic and lead to his death anyways. Looks like his only option is to find Kakarot. But he doesn't know how he's supposed to find Kakarot. He doesn't have a scouter anymore. All he saw was the direction he flew off in, so he just tries doing that, flying off in the same direction that Kakarot went. It takes him a bit of time because he has to fly slowly and look for anything nearby. Eventually, he's over a large body of water, and on there, there's a small island with a house on it, and he sees that same ship from before. This is the island that he was just at. They probably just all returned here, so he lands nearby, and he does see Goku again, yelling out at him. Goku clearly looks ready to fight, but Raditz isn't here for that. He asks Kakarot what he's planning, and Goku says he's not planning anything, and he grabs his brother by the shirt. He's planning to kill Raditz or something, right? Goku says no. Raditz saw Goku before, he's not a ruthless Saiyan like Raditz. That's not something he would do, and he doesn't really have a reason to do so. Although, a few other people probably want to kill him right now. But he assures Raditz that that's not what he's planning. He repeats to Raditz what he said before. He could stay here, but he's not going to help him get home. And if he does cause any issues, Goku will intervene again. Raditz tells Goku he's crazy if he thinks he's staying on this planet. He just needs his ship repaired and he'll be out of here. Well, Goku says he can't do anything, but almost probably the only person who could. So he goes up to her, and before he can even say anything... She turns it down. She has no reason to help Raditz, especially because he's probably just going to come back here and kill them. And that's if his friends even end up joining him. It seems like they don't even care that he was stranded here. She can't be serious. Wouldn't it be better for them if he was just off this planet? Shouldn't they be scared that he's around here doing whatever he wants? Honestly, Bulma says she's not that concerned. They beat him once. Plus, thanks to these scouters, she's got a lot more data on the Saiyans. And for next time, they also know about his tail being a weak point. Frustrated not knowing what to do, Raditz contemplates just blowing up this entire island. But instead, he just launches up into the air, flying off into a random direction. Krillin asks if they think he's going to do anything bad, but Bulma says they shouldn't be worried. He's just a big man-child and he knows he's lost. Goku watches as Raditz flies off too, with Chi-Chi wondering if it was the right choice to let him go. But Goku says they'll be fine. Besides, he says the two of them fighting together will be able to take him down. Maybe even Gohan one day. Although, he thinks Raditz will act smart and not do anything. There's a little bit of a time skip here, about a year. Vegeta and Nappa actually don't come to Earth. They're honestly unconcerned about Raditz. Obviously, Frieza wouldn't care either. Of course, Vegeta and Nappa won't mention that he got stranded on a mission trying to find a Saiyan, but they just say he got stranded on a mission. And that's good for Frieza. One less Saiyan to worry about, especially because he was kind of expendable anyways. How fun, the Saiyan got rid of himself and he didn't even need to lift a finger. It's not like Vegeta and Nappa could even blame him for it. And Nappa wonders if they really should get Raditz. 
He tells Vegeta maybe they'll need another Saiyan, but Vegeta says it doesn't matter. Raditz was weak anyways, and if he was defeated by those Earthlings, they don't need him. Plus, it didn't seem like Kakarot was that strong either. What use do those two have if they're just going to be dead weight? Them combined doesn't even add up to half of Nappa's strength. Thinking about it that way, Nappa laughs it off. So yeah, at least for now, there's not going to be any involvement from the Saiyans, and there's no ties to Frieza either. And without knowing about the Dragon Balls, they're not going to be coming to Earth for that either. Over this past year though, what's everyone been up to? There haven't been too many interesting developments from our protagonists. Really, everything that happened just involves Raditz. Of course, he's trying to fix his ship and trying to get off the planet, but he has no clue how to fix it. Even if he did know, he doesn't think this planet is advanced enough for that. But he's been trying everything in his power to fix it. He curses everything, though. He should just kill everyone on the stupid planet. It wouldn't be tough, he'd just have to kill the strong fighters individually, and then take out the rest. Besides, after healing up, he did get a little bit of an increase in strength, too. But it's not like he's been training or anything. He has kept going back to Cabs Corp trying to beg for Bulma to fix the ship up, basically. And Bulma is kind of tempted because the idea to make a ship with interstellar travel, but she's not going to help him. And she's now getting annoyed with him showing up so much. Especially because at points it seems like he's hitting on her. Which Yamcha doesn't like either. It looks like she's really not going to help here. But one day he thinks he's finally done it. The damage to the ship wasn't too bad. It's mainly the back part that was hit, and he just needed to patch up the engine. The issue is the speed that he needs. He needs to reach escape velocity. And then the engine should be powerful enough to speed up within space. The resistance here on Earth is what's keeping him down. Now, there are a couple ways around this. He could try and launch himself in the air and then try and climb into the ship, and it wouldn't be hard because launching a Key Blast would have enough power to launch him out into space. But the issue is him climbing into the ship. He probably wouldn't be able to do it quick enough to actually survive it. So, he has to fix the engine. And he thinks he has something, although if this doesn't work, he's probably going to die out in space. And at this point, it's whatever to him. He'd rather die trying than do nothing. He launches the ship and at first it seems like it worked. He can't believe it, he actually fixed it. He just has a little bit more to go until he exits the atmosphere. But then everything starts shaking, a lot. In the nick of time, Raditz is able to jump out of the ship, thinking it's going to explode, or continuously go into space and then break apart. Either way, both aren't ideal outcomes. But the ship surprisingly stays intact, it just starts falling, crashing nearby on the land below. Raditz is in a pretty strange part of Earth. It's very cold over here. Everything's frozen over. He looks around for the ship, and eventually does find it. Surprisingly enough, even though only a few minutes have passed, the entire ship is frozen over already. This damn planet, everything's pissing him off. Out of frustration, Radish just melts everything in the area with the Key Blast. He should just raise this entire part of Earth, melting everything here. But he keeps his cool, no pun intended. Causing a climate disaster won't be good for him either, at least not until he leaves this planet. A good chunk of this region is melted by him though. He picks up his ship, and then flies back off to where he came from. Roshi's chilling out at Kalmai House one day. There's a big wave that comes towards the house as something is dropped in the water, and he hears someone yelling outside. He opens the door to see Raditz there towering over him, asking where that woman is. He needs to speak to her again. Roshi says she isn't here. He'll have better luck just going to Cap's Corp. Besides him, the only other people here are Krillin, Ten, and Chaozu. Usually she does train here, but today she's just with Yamcha alone back at Cap's Corp. Fine, he'll just head back there. Hopefully this time she does something. He has to think of what to say though. Obviously he can't threaten to kill her because then he won't have a way off this planet. But he needs to convince her somehow to fix his ship. He steps out of Kame House and picks up his ship. But as he's about to take off, he sees something in the distance. It almost looks like a tsunami. This kind of makes him panic a bit because he didn't think he melted that much water. He thinks it's from that, but then he sees, as it's getting closer, there's something that's causing the wave. At first he thinks it's some sort of ship, but no. It's some giant mechanic structure coming towards them. Quickly, Raditz throws up a blast, evaporating all the water, but doing nothing to the mechanical thing behind it. The thing just flies through Raditz's blast, knocking him far away. The others all feel a massive power show up, and they see Raditz rocket back across the water. What the hell is this thing? In front of Kame House, there's a giant robot standing there. Unbeknownst to Raditz, the area he melted actually contained a lab and closed in ice. Of course, he had no way of knowing this, and no one else knew what was going on either. But standing in front of them in Kame House is the now thought out Dr. Wheelow, a scientist who was long ago frozen on the ice, now inadvertently freed by Raditz. He proclaims that this fight should be a fun test of his powers, and better yet, he might be able to find a body that he could use. That person he just attacked, the one who freed him from the ice, he does seem pretty powerful judging by his key. Maybe he'll take Raditz's body as his own. They have no clue what this guy's talking about, or more importantly, who he is, or what he is for that matter, but the fact that he says he wants to take Raditz's body, yeah, that's clearly a threat. Roshi yells at them to move this fight away from Kame House at the very least. But before he can even finish his sentence, Raditz launches a powerful blast at Dr. Wheelow, sending him flying across the water, but not really doing any damage. He flies after the mechanical monster, and the three others follow him with Roshi staying behind. He would help if only he could fly there. Dr. Wheelow was launched across the entire ocean, landing in an empty beach at the other side. He purposely took that hit, wanting to see how powerful Raditz could be. He knew it wouldn't really do too much damage, especially because he was on guard when it happened. And this just confirms what he thought. This guy's body, that's the body he's going to steal. A fight breaks out. Far away at Goku's house, 
He senses all of this going on, immediately wanting to leave to find out what's happening. Some giant key showed up and it feels malicious. And despite Dr. Wheelow actually being mostly mechanical, his key can be sensed. But then they get a phone call. It's from Yamcha. They were just contacted by Master Roshi actually, who told them everything that just happened. They're heading over right away. And Goku's gonna go too. It sounds like his friends are in trouble. Gohan stays home with Ox King, not coming along for the fight. Despite him actually having done some training, they don't want to bring him along for this, it's way too dangerous. But Chi-Chi actually does decide to go along, basically having to chase after Goku as he runs out of the house and then flies away. Since we're at a point where we still have power levels, let's actually cover the power of our group by now, because some things have changed. Raditz isn't necessarily part of the group, but we'll count him still because he is the strongest person on Earth right now. The multiple Zenkais he's gained really did help him, and after this year has passed, he's at around 4,000 in terms of his power. Not far behind is Goku, at a power of about 3,000. Next is Piccolo at about 2,500, and behind that is Yamcha and Bulma, both at around 2,000. And not too far behind there is Krillin, Ten, and Chi-Chi, all at around 1,500, with Chaozu at about 1,000, and even though he's not involved in this fight, for Gohan we'll put him at 200, but they haven't seen his full strength yet. As for Dr. Wheelow himself, he's never been in one of my videos, and I'm sure some of you haven't even seen his movie, which I don't really blame you, it's not like important in the grand scheme of things, but I thought it would be fun to include him for once. But in terms of his strength, we will have to adjust him. Especially because if we use his movie scaling, he'd be way too strong for this point, as with most movie characters. So we'll put him at around 10,000. But of course, as he fights, he gathers data on all the fighters around him, and he can even absorb their attacks to an extent. He adapts quickly during battle. He might be taking a little bit of a hit in terms of power when he steals Raditz's body, but it's definitely going to be worth it in the end. Having an actual humanoid body will be great. Although something is strange about that guy. He doesn't even seem human, almost alien-like. He is relatively new on this planet, after all. He is dressed differently from the others and looks very different, too. But Wheelow is not fighting everyone just yet. He doesn't want to destroy their bodies after all. First, he'll test them with the Brutal Warriors. He effortlessly holds everyone off, as he summons his Brutal Warriors, who are there to basically test all of Wheelow's opponents. This kind of pisses Raditz off. What, does he think they're not good enough for the main event? They fight these warriors off with relative ease, with Wheelow watching as everything goes down, learning more of their moves and abilities. And his mind is set on it. He definitely wants to take Raditz's body. But then he feels something approaching. There's a ship up above in the sky. Wheelow aims one of his arms up ready to shoot it down. But as he opens the claw to shoot a blast, something goes into it. It's a key blast that almost homed in on him. Yamcha and Bomo jump out of the ship. Of course they weren't going to show up without defenses. Yamcha surrounded the ship with a couple of spear balls, as they then explode inside of Dr. Wheelow's claw. He says that was pretty impressive. These two warriors came prepared. Wheelow's henchmen then yell out to him, asking if he wants them to take out Bulma and Yamcha. And Bulma kind of recognized the name. Dr. Wheelow, she's heard of that before. Of course, when they said they were fighting a giant mechanical monster, she wouldn't have known. But she's read about that in a journal before. She remembers hearing that name. He was apparently some really brilliant and almost insane scientist. And he's from a while ago, too. Decades ago, he disappeared without a trace and no one knew what happened to him. It's strange, too, because she feels like she's heard about another doctor like that, someone who delved into madness over machines and then just disappeared off the face of the earth one day. But that name escapes her, and that isn't important right now. Not long after, Goku and Chi-Chi land nearby, too. And the brutal warriors are defeated. But that doesn't mean Dr. Wheelow is going to fight just yet. Again, he doesn't want to damage that body that he's going to steal. And he does want to analyze their abilities a little bit more before he fights them. The more data, the better. Plus, there's a few things here that make him want to change his plans. Dr. Cochin did tell him about that scientist Bulma there. Sure enough, that is her. He's surprised to see that she's fighting, too. He's not sure how strong she is as a warrior, but he knows her smarts are valuable. So maybe he could try to utilize that from her. What a lucky day for him. He gets freed from the ice, he finds the perfect body to steal, and he could probably even extract Bulma's brain to get some data out of that, too. Plus, he has a little fun idea in mind. He has one more warrior they still haven't fought. And maybe he could have a few of them join his side. The reason his other bio-warriors were gone for so long was because, well, they were trying to get another ally to join them, mind-controlling someone that they were familiar with. And it seems he's fully mind-controlled at this point, and luckily for Wheelow, he showed up at just the right time. The sense of familiar energy entered the battlefield. It's Piccolo, looking a little bit different from normal, having been brainwashed by Dr. Wheelow. Maybe he could brainwash a few of the others. Even though he's not going to steal their bodies, he does have fun experimenting, so having a few more warriors under his control could be pretty beneficial. Wheelow then opens one of his claws, swiping Raditz up. He has to thank him for all this. They spotted him at just the right time. He was the one who melted the ice. Dr. Cochin was just going to use the Dragon Balls to unfreeze the ice. But this was much easier. What the hell are the Dragon Balls? This is the first time that Raditz is hearing of them. Not that it matters. Dr. Wheelow launches off, bringing Raditz back to his lab. Of course, everyone tries to chase him, and Piccolo's about to stop them from going, but Ten Krillin and Chaozu then attack him together. They say they'll hold Piccolo off. He's clearly brainwashed right now and not in the right state of mind, but they should be able to take him on pretty easily. They tell the others to go after Wheelow, with Bulma then throwing a capsule down spawning another ship. As she, Yamcha, Goku, and Chi-Chi get aboard it, ready to chase down the Doctor. And this is where we leave off for now. What do you guys think about this part? What's going to happen next time? Leave any thoughts or suggestions in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already, especially if you want to see more parts of the series or if you just want to help out the channel. 
Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.